Okay, I think eight o'clock. I think we'll start. Okay, there are okay, 54 people, participants right now at the moment. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's um, talk by Ms. Lillian Tong. Uh, she's an expert. I will introduce her later. Uh, so, yes, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our YMCA presentation on the uh, heritage and legacy. Okay, yeah. I will introduce Ms. Lillian Tong, our speaker today. She is a Penang Yonya cultural advocate, animated storyteller of the Straits Chinese, curator, choreographer, Yonya craftsman and performer at world and expositions, conventions and exhibitions. She represented the, you are saying the Shanghai World Expo 2010 of the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Museum in Taiwan in 2011. She's a cultural representative for Malaysia in the ASEAN China One Belt One Road Cultural Exchange. Curator of the Peranakan Diaspora, Classical Taiwanese Literature Southwest Dispersion in the Early 20th Century Exhibition at the National Taiwan Museum of Literature in 2019 to 2020. Museum Director of the Penang Peranakan Mansion, Penang. Consultant Curator of the Georgetown Mansion, and the Straits Chinese Jewelry Museum in Malacca. President of the Persatuan Peranakan Baba Nyonya Pulau Pinang, Vice President of the State Chinese Penang Association, received a grant from UNESCO GTWHI World Heritage and Museums Program, contributed to the UNESCO GTWHI Ten Intangible Cultural Heritage Inventorying for Georgetown, recipient of the Georgetown World Heritage Incorporated Lifetime Achievement Award. She was awarded the Penang State Johan, Darja Johan Negri and featured in Successful People in Malaysia in the first edition. She also has written several books, namely The Straight Chinese Gold Jewelry, Straight Chinese Embroidery and Beadwork, The Gilded Age Penang Straits Chinese Bama Donya Wedding, and her latest uh, book is Once Upon a Kamching, an anthology of Baba Nyonya stories. Okay, without much further ado, I'd like to introduce Ms. Lin Tong to the stage, the virtual stage. <laughs> Ms. Lin Tong, welcome. Thank you for attending, uh, giving this talk. Thank you so very much for coming in. Thank you. So, 1821 to 2021, two centuries. And um, I'm very thankful to Lahad Road YMCA for inviting me. And then when I was, uh, uh, the reason why I, I agreed was that they are, they are in Lahad Road. And that's where my grandfather, Wong Pak Fook, uh, postmaster of uh, Taipei. And so uh, as I was doing the research for this paper, I realized and found out that he, uh, Wong, uh, Ting Ken Kui is going to celebrate his 200th anniversary. And so we put together this, this is going to be the inaugural, the first of the celebrations that we're going to have for him. So uh, Ting Ken Kui was a very important man because uh, to typing especially, and also he has this Penang connection. Well, he can be said to be the founder an administrator of modern typing or helped in the administration of modern typing. And he was a very fantastic man because he was able to straddle the European and Imperial Qing governments. So he was recognized by the Europeans as well as the Chinese uh, Qing government. Uh, that uh, The reason being, he was made Kapitan China Zheng Keng Kui. Now, uh, the title Kapitan China was given to him by the British because um, they appointed him as head over all the Chinese. So he was like a comprador or the intermediary where um, if you, the British, when they appoint someone like a Capitan, then he has knowledge of the local customs, uh, the social fabric of the people, and it is easier to uh, get things done that way. Secondly, he was a second ranked Mandarin conferred the peacock feather cap by the imperial Qing government. So uh, there are, of course, uh, debates uh, about like uh, this um, Capitan titles because some are bought, but uh, he was recognized because of his uh, great contributions, which we'll later find out. 
tycoon, philanthropist, businessman, and uh, especially helping in, uh, China with the funding for wars uh, and uh, in, I think, Anam, the Franco Anam War. And uh, he was, very excitingly, head of the Hai San Secret Society, a very much powerful and feared society. Uh, the opposing, opposing society would be the Gihins, both in Taipei and in Penang. And so besides being a tycoon philanthropist, he was all this. Now, how did he came to come to Larut? Those days were spelled La Root, L-A-R-O-O-T, or L-A-R-O-T, Taiping. Well, he came from Guangdong in China to Nanyang, the South Seas. Now, this boy was sent by his mother. His father, Chung, um, Chung, uh, Chung Singfa, had earlier come to Malaya, to try his fortune. Well, back in those days, it was the Taipei Rebellion and uh, you know the infighting and all that. So a lot of people were in danger and all they feel like endangered and so they left. But some were just adventurous coming to the Nanyang, whether it's Champa An uh, Funan or Trunganu or Indonesia to look for a new life of your fortune and send money back to their families in China. So he came and then there was no use of the father. So the mother sent the son, uh, that is uh, Chung Keng Kui's brother, Chung Keng Sing. And he himself, Chung Keng Sing, actually made a name for himself. He was known as Li Kong Sing, Thunder God Sing. And um, then there was still no news of the father and the brother now. So this mother <laughs> decided to send the third son, Chung Keng Kui, to look for the father and brother. And so he arrived in Penang and later, uh, there are two stories that he was in Penang and he went with them to Taiping or he came to Penang, he couldn't find them, he went to Taiping and found them. And later he became, uh, he worked his way up to become the leader of the Python secret societies. Now, secrets, uh, uh, the, this clans or secret societies are uh, important part of the social fabric for Chinese, overseas Chinese who came here because the reason why he can find his, his father and brother in, in, uh, in Taiping was like, you know, hey, do you know this person? Or he will go to the Hakka, the, where the Hakka people is, where the Hakka people? Oh, there. So they will go in there mm -hmm. and he will find them and eventually they will get connected. Now, in Taiping at that time, he was Hakka under the High Sun Secret Society. There were two groups. One was the five associations, which is Hakka, the Gokwan. Go fight at Tian Pua, which uh, later is to become Taiping. And then there was the other Cantonese Seihuan Four Associations at Tian Baru, which is today's Kamunting. And they were assigned, uh, aligned to the Gihins. Now, Tin was discovered in 1840s by Long Jaffa, or rather, Long Jaffa's elephant. It seems the story goes that one day he was missing. And when he was found again, they found Tin ore in uh, his feet. So that led to the discovery of tin. And guess what is Long Jaffa's elephant's name? Larut. That is how <laughs> the name came to be called Larut. But when Kapitan was a uh, high sun uh, secret society, oh, by the way, secret societies are, of course, they protect the cl clans, uh, anybody from the same province in China or the same surname or the same dialect group, you come and we will help you settle in, find jobs for you and and protect you. And of course, protection means violence sometimes. Eh? And also another reason I found out about uh, why it's called secret societies is because the British had no idea at all what these Chinese are doing, these societies are doing. And, and they are so secret. So the, the British just labeled them. <laughs> so the first Larut war, yeah, okay. oh, there were four wars in Larut. And all involving uh, Kapitan Chin, no, he was not Kapitan yet. Um, Ching Ken Kui, head of the High Sun, against the Gihin. Or sometimes it was Hakas and Hakas fighting. Hakas from the different provinces. Huh? The first one was over land and water rights. So they wanted the water cores to come to the mines. So there was a big fight, territorial. Huh? Second Larut War in 1865 started with a gambling quarrel. So, the uh, 14, the, the 
Gi Hin took the, uh, uh, rather 14 prisoners were taken and 13 were killed and one escaped. So uh, went back to Hai San and told them that, oh, you know, our, our Peng Tai got killed already because of this gambling problem. And of course there must be revenge. So they went and Hai Sans went and raised the village and killed 40 men. Now this crazy episode actually spread to province Wellesley and Penang Island. And then all the other secret societies joined in the fray because there was always some Hai San friend you have or some uh, Hakka, no sorry, Hakka uh, relatives. So everybody fought. And at that time, there were already 40,000 Hakka and Cantonese miners in Larut. So they were very close by, Glen Baru and Klian Poa, and that led to the next battle, Larut War number three, 1872. Now this one has an interesting twist. It was dispute over boundaries and adulterous affair. So apparently there was this man, Li Akun, or Li, uh, Li Ko Yin. He was of the Sinning fraction, and he was an attorney of Larut for the Gihin leader. So he attempted to negotiate with the Hai Sans, but instead, in a twist of event, he was accused of having an affair with the wife of not just anybody, but a nephew of Cheng Keng Kui. How scary is that? So the adulterous couple apparently was caught, and then they were tortured and punished and sentenced to die by being put into a pig's cage, rattan cage, and drowned in the tin mines. So that is a common practice for uh, a punishment for adultery in those days. It's called cham chi long. So drown the couple in uh, chi long, the pig's uh, basket. So in this, the Haisan lost this fight, and then they had to run back to Penang to find century. Then in 18... 73 was the fourth Larut War and the final one. So the Haisan later regained Larut and the Gihins were supported by Raja Abdullah. They attacked them and they brought in men from Singapore, fighting men to come and attack them. And so the trouble spread again. Now, this was rather serious because it had spread over to the, uh, uh, to involve the Parat royals, the sultans, and uh, so it was like the Malay sultans were fighting with each other, taking sides with the Chinese and the Chinese were fighting. So it was a big mess. And the, the Penang uh, Straits Chinese people were, who had uh, interest and investments in the tin mines were getting very uh, apprehensive. And then because of all this trouble, they actually asked for the British to come and arbitrate or to step in. So it began with the Pankor Treaty. Uh, it, it, it led to the Pankor Treaty of 1874. And of course, one of the signatory is our Kapitan China, Zheng Kenkui. Oh, sorry, not Kapitan yet. Uh, Zheng Kenkui. Oh yeah, Kapitan China, yes, yes, by the British already. So uh, this guy and all the fighting in Para actually brought in the intervention of the British into the affairs of Malay Sultans and the Malay States, which eventually turned into the Federated Malay States. So then um, the treaty was signed by Sir Andrew Clark and Kapitan uh, China Cheng Keng Kui and the opposing fraction of Gihin, Chin Ayam. And uh, they, was, they signed the treaty in a ship called the HMS Pluto off uh, Panko Island. Now Cheng Keng Kui was very, spe is very special, was very special is very special to Taiping because, because of this Pankor Treaty, Larut was renamed Taiping, Great Peace, to commemorate the truce between the fighting uh, fractions. And he was also special to Taiping because he was a pioneer of new tin mining techniques like hydraulic, uh, hydraulic machinery. And he was a good friend of Sahulo, and Sahulo would recommend European things, uh, machines, and he would test them out and he would uh, try them. So he was kind of a visionary at that time, of his time. And Taiping was then, at one time, in uh, uh, seven, 1870s, the 
administrative center and capital of Para before it was moved to Ipoh, the capital moved to Ipoh only in 1937. So Taiping was a very important town because of this tin mining. And because of the tin mining and uh, uh, Ching Keng Kui and the Chinese uh, tin miners and all that, uh, the British actually built Port Belt, the first Malayan railway, which is today, Kuala Sepatang, where you have your good seafood. But uh, the, the uh, station, the, the railway there is gone, except for you can see it's a sign there that still says Port Well. And because of this railway, there was also uh, roads leading to into Taiping. And then because of the roads, it led to the telegraph. It allows the telegraph, telegraph system to be put in effect and also start a postal route. And there was also steamships plying the Penang Phuket route. And uh, Kapitan China owned one steamship called the Sri Sarawak. So now I wonder if the Fuchaos in Sarawak uh, and the Hakas, um, he has something to do with it since he named his uh, steamer Sri Sarawak. And this, of course, was attested by our historical records and also by a, a Victorian writer, Isabella Bird, who wrote the book, The Golden Chasonis. And of course, Kapitan China Ting Ken Kui gifted Taiping the Lake Gardens, which was previously uh, tin mining pools. So it turned into the beautiful Lake Gardens today. So um, Kapitan China did very well in his adopted country, but he never forgot China too. And not only his adopted country, Malaya, China, plus he was uh, caring enough to uh, donate money to uh, global causes. Now in Penang, he built, oh, he was built, he built a, a lot of schools and one of them is the St. Xavier's Institution. St. Xavier's Institution, the picture, please. Aha, uh -huh. oh, this was the old St. Xavier's, the original St. Xavier's Institution. Today, it doesn't look anything like that because it was bombed by the, uh, they think that it was bombed by the Japanese, but apparently it was bombed by the British. I think mistakenly, or if they say that it's uh, born by the Japanese, uh, some books wrote that the Japanese thought that this was a, you know, a seat of government, so they bombed it. And he also gave money to free school. In fact, his son, Chung Taiping, by the way, his fourth son, Chung Taiping, who took after him and continued his business, his name was Taiping, and he was named after Taiping. So uh, he was in St. Xavier's, but he was also in the earlier school in Taiping, and that's Taiping, your Edward, Edward uh, Institution of School. And he also had the Gohok Tong in Penang, the Five Luck Villa. And he sat on lots of boards, uh, commissioned for the pacification of Larut, uh, where Frank Sertotham and Pickering actually invited him. The Para State Legislative Council, invited by Sir Hugh Long, and he formed associations like the Senglung Association of Tin Miners, which is still existing in Perak today. Um, and they, in fact, is in Taiping. And we will be connecting with them to further the celebration and commemoration of his 20th year. He's president of the Penang Chinese Tapo, a very important position. And he gave to the Indian, India Famine Relief Fund, Transvaal War Fund, and the Franco Anam War Relief Fund. So in Penang, now, uh, oh, by the way, when he retired uh, in like 1884, he came to Penang and built Penang Peranakan Mansion. But also in Penang, he helped in the building of our very famous and iconic Cake Lok Si. The temple? You, uh, Dr. Leung, can you show them? Uh, yeah, so this was like, uh, is not so quite old picture. And uh, Keloxi was named Keloxi, meaning pure land temple, or the temple of supreme joy. And it was five Hakka tycoons, his heng tire, who uh, put, who the main benefactors, who gave money to build this. And it was reported that the consular, consular representative of China and Penang reported to the Qing imperial government and Emperor Gongsu bestowed 7,000 
some say 700, 7,000, 70,000. I think it's more likely 700, 7,000 volumes of psalms and sacred works of Buddhism. And uh, he, he uh, actually also, um, uh, China also proclaimed that this is the main Chinese temple of all Chinese temples in Penang. And uh, the tour guide in me cannot help but show you that uh, uh, advertisement for Penang tourism. <laughs> that uh, you see, this, this pagoda is so unusual. The bottom uh, uh, tier is Chinese uh, architecture. Then the middle tier is Thai and the top tier Burmese. Yeah. So um, with these edicts and the uh, Psalms and the Buddhist scriptures, there was a return royal position, uh, procession and these edicts or, or the Psalms and scriptures were carried on a rattan seated chair. And of course, our Kapitan China and his uh, four other friends and all the important uh, prominent people of Penang, they marched on the street in the full regalia of Kapitan China uh, in their robes uh, as Kapitan Chinas. And um, uh, Chinese uh, dignitaries rode on pony carts. So he, uh, I think the Chinese, they believe that to do good works, you build schools, build hospitals and temples. So he also built the Sipil Topekong Temple in Tanjung Tokong. Now, he, we think this China Ape just China Ape, yeah? No. Uh, he made friends with the Europeans and the colonial masters. And he had the support of the European engineers, especially in Penang, because he actually gave them their own building. So oh, imagine uh, you have an association and somebody gave you a, a building. Yeah, so uh, they actually then thanked him with a plug. Uh, Dr. Leong, the plug that shows that the European engineers uh, gave to yeah, so this plaque you can see it at Pinang Pranakan mentioned today. It was given to him by the European engineers in his honor. So one of the most magnificent, of course, he builds like castles in in uh, Penang Hill, but uh, people cannot find this castle anymore. It was lost or demolished or whatever. And um, now we come to the most magnificent. Uh, of his buildings, and that's the High Ki Chan, which is today Pinang Pranakan Mansion on 29 Church Street. But do you know that the Chinese name for Church Street is Gihin, Ke, Gihin Street? So, how come he is a High Sun Secret Society head leader living on the Gihin, Ke, Gihin Street? Well, here is the story. The building that is, uh, we have now on 29 Church Street, the Pinang Peranakan Mansion, is on the former, is the former headquarters of the Gihins. They actually own uh, next to 29 Church Street. So you see the front portion here, there's our car park. There was 31 Church Street and that was the Gihin headquarters. Then there was this mansion and next to it, the other side is the temple. But, um, China was, uh, I, I think he wanted to vindicate himself. And so when he got this building, some stories goes that uh, because he, uh, the Gihins lost, then they had to uh, pay him by giving him this land. And what, guess what he did? He demolished their whole headquarters and turned it into a car park. But of course, those days, it's not a car park. Those days, it was uh, uh, for horses and carriages. Huh? So the car park that you see in Pinang Pranakan Mansion was the headquarters of the Gihin. Uh, that was a very smart thing to do, if nasty, to your enemies. So he had ousted them and then he built 29 Church Street. And it's called Hai Kichan, which is uh, translated as Sea Remembrance Hall or Store. Now you see, as with most Chinese uh, businessmen, in those days, the bottom or lower part of your house uh, see, on the, on the, uh, above the door is Hai Kijan. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe it is. I think it is. It should be. <laughs> Sorry, Anonia. Don't know Mandarin. Okay, so um, he, the, the lower part of the house was for business and uh, living quarters was upstairs. And by that time, he has uh, 
two main wives, one left in China all the days of her life, never allowed to come here and died in Hong Kong. And then here he married another wife, a principal wife, two minor wives and concubines. So I think the wife he most sayang is his fourth wife, a Madam Tan, because she was buried next to him in his uh, tomb. So <clears throat> you will see our fencing and the railings of uh, Pinang Pranakan mentioned today, or Haikijan. Now those, uh, Dr. Leong, the fencing, the next picture, please. Ah, oh, this is the interior. Okay, so uh, McFarlane was uh, responsible for this beautiful iron fencing and railings of the previous uh, Tong, the Five Luck Villa, which was a school. Then, of course, uh, Captain Chinal liked this place and he moved the school to Chulia Street. He bought a building and invited them to go and start a school there. And he took over this and constructed Shen Ji Jia Shu, forgive me, my Mandarin is <laughs> a wrong pronunciation. Uh, Shen Ji is his uh, title when he got the um, Mandarin, when he was uh, made a Mandarin, that's his title. Jia Shu is like a personal temple, family, family, school. Um, that was the reason why they had to call it a school because of some political reasons. Yeah. So um, you look at this. It is a Chinese temple in architecture, but the railings are wrought iron, McFarlane Glasgow, Scottish Iron Works. And at the top of it, you can see the, the crown. So it's, it's a reminder of the, the British colonial, uh, 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 Britain as the, uh, we are a colony of Britain. And so there was a crown in the Chinese temple. It's quite amazing. And that's well, one of the things you will notice in. Uh, Penang temples, and I saw some in um, Samarang in Indonesia, is that in a, such a temples as this, they will have chandeliers, perhaps waterford crystal chandeliers. So it's Chinese and uh, uh, Western mixer. Now let's look at the interiors, the main hall today. Ah, yes. So here is the main door. This is the main door. And um, uh, as with most, okay, Kapitan China is definitely not Peranakan or Papa Nonya. There's a difference between Peranakan and Papa Nonya. So he is neither. Uh, but his son, Chung Taiping, or himself, I don't know, with his concubines and wife, I don't know if Madam Tan is a Nonya, but his son were hanging around uh, the, the Straits Chinese at that time later. Um, so this house was recreated to be a Baba Nonya look alike house. It, so Kapitan China was originally not a Baba, right? He was Chinaman true and true. So um, as with most Nonya house, when you come in, there will be a mother of whole table and chairs, but usually it's got bags for now, but this one we've just changed the exhibits. And of course, lining the walls will be the old uh, mother of pearl chairs with arms. And these are so special because actually with a mallet, a rubber mallet, you can just knock them apart. You know, you can knock them because they are uh, uh, assembled together by hinge, uh, mortises and tenons. So if you knock them apart, you can collapse them and pack it and take it with you. So uh, today, these two chairs are dressed very pretty in e kyok. That means that it could be, it could be Chinese New Year or there's going to be a wedding. So the chairs are all dressed up prettily. Um, then we have lattice screens. Lattice screen, uh, okay. So uh, this one is a tessellated uh, caustic and minton tiles from Stoke on Trent. So you see the flooring is, it, is a, it's a Chinese mandarinate style house, uh, what they call it, straight eclectic. Outside looks like an English manor, inside Chinese layout. And the tiles are West uh, Victorian. And of course, Scottish pillars. So can you imagine in th this house was so wonderfully put together for that era, the Gilded Age, because Penang was a port city and all the ships that travel from the East, from uh, India and Europe and England. Some visitors sometimes always ask me, 
if they don't know about uh, Papua New Guinea culture, they'll say, uh, I think you all are a bit mixed up. You, you try to put everything in. But that's the, the, the style, the fashion of that era is very Baroque, like uh, more is better, more is more. So uh, beautiful lattice screens. So the, the rooms of, of the house are partitioned by lattice screens and it gives a privacy because the main hall, just now we saw the Tuatia, is for visitors, acquaintances, business association, associates. And you don't want them to look into the family area. So there is this layering that separates them. They are not allowed to go in unless you're more familiar with the family. And uh, this actually lattice screens provide a cooling effect. For example, if you were to open your mouth and blow on your hand, you feel that the air coming out is very uh, is warm, but if you were to blow it this way, then it's cool. And this is the science behind it. So when the air goes through this, it cools the whole place down. Plus an added air well, so it actually cools the house and the high ceiling also. Huh? So then, um, next photo, please. Okay, so this is one of our salon saloons, like for the uh, salon for the ladies. Um, we actually have a turkey table. So, but those days it was still the Haikichana, the business place. But we have done up to be a ladies uh, area where they can play chicky and gossip and uh, perhaps do their embroidery. Next picture, please. So this is another view. You can see the British. Uh, dresser that's so huge, it is always in the house and uh, usually it's in the front of the tortilla, blocking the lattice screens. And of course, the table for Chiki, which uh, we love to play. And if you want to learn, you come to Penang and Penang Paranagan Mansion, and we shall have a session. Uh, in Penang, we still have our, our um, uh, senior nonias who are still playing the game and they are very crafty. Uh, two that I know, and it, oh, that's my auntie uh, Molet, Molet E. This beautiful lady, I think she's about 80 years old. When she was 78, she went to Malacca for our Peranakan convention, and there was a Miss, uh, I think Miss Kabaya. And there were, of course, young girls of uh, 20 and uh, 30s. And here is this lady, 78, and she beat them all. She got the title of uh, Miss Kabaya. She, she's just a really epitome of our Nonya. Okay, next picture. Okay, so here is from the uh, main hall. We're going into the GTA. So you can see the air well. Air wells are, are a wonderful feature in the house because they give you uh, light, natural light, Imagine a roof over so stifling and so dark. So it gives you natural light, it gives you fresh air, and when it rains, it cools down the house. And if it rain hard, rains hard enough, you have a little pool right in the middle of your uh, house before it drains away. And so see the beautiful uh, ironworks that we have running around the balcony. Okay, the next one is our GTA or Teng Tok. This is the upstairs, huh? a view from the upstairs. And it's good because when, when we have visitors coming up and a father doesn't want the young girls to, to be busybody, they will run upstairs and they can still peep and see who's in the door here. All right, uh, let's go to the next picture. Okay, so this is our GTA. G is second, two. So this is the GTA. And of course, at the GTA just now, we had the uh, Teng To. And uh, now we're going upstairs. You see the staircase also with a Fleur de Lisa, uh, the Prince of Wales feathers leading all the way upstairs. And upstairs, we have the common family area. Yeah, so this is a huge, massive. Uh, family area and uh, we have hung at the two sides the right and left side you see the big portraits of uh, Capitan China now when he was made Capitan China they have a very good system that uh, 
you know, like the lords and ladies, it's your children who inherit the title. But no, for the Chinese, and I love the system, your father and your grandfather, three generations, will inherit the title of the son. So because Capitan China was made second rank Mandarin, his father and his grandfather, although they had passed on, were also then uh, given the title of Capitan China. So it is what a reward it is when you have raised an illustrious son and you are rewarded with the title that uh, he is given, like whether a doctor or a country. Ah, if a son is a country, then you also become tan tan sri, yeah? So that's, <laughs> I think that's a very nice way of rewarding parents for raising up good children. Okay, and of course, uh, Kapitan China was a uh, Mandarin of the second rank. And that's him on the uh, left side wall. Uh, second rank Mandarins uh, have pheasants on their, emblazoned on their chest. And this is the other side, of, uh, just the previous picture was the other side of the, uh, yeah, the other living area. So I, I just love this place, you know, it's so cool. And I would love to do my kasumane beading here or some needlework here because uh, it's airy, it's got good light and it's cool. Leading to the other rooms, let's see the room. Okay, so we suppose that this is a maiden's room. So it's got um, iron bed, but this iron bed is a uh, Victorian, British, but look at the curtains, they are Chinese. So that's how the world was then, or rather for Peranakas, Abab, sorry, no, Baba Nonias. Um, you can have a British bed, but you will prefer Chinese drapes because of the beautiful silks and embroidery. So it was dressed that way. So that is the beautiful, eclectic and uh, fusion thing that we have. It's so lovely. Actually, uh, for a real British Victorian bits in some Babanonia homes, it will be lace, ruffled lace on the top instead of those uh, silk cut, uh, silk balances. All right, next picture. Ah, that's, that's me and one uh, famous actress, I don't know Chinese actress, huh, but apparently she was famous and her name, I still remember, it's unforgettable. Her name is Jinx. I don't know if I spell J-I-N-G or J-I-N-X, but she told me she's Jinx. <laughs> okay, so uh, she, she's having a, a Kasomane beading class. And of course, if you want advertisement, advertisement now. <laughs> if you want to learn Kasomane, you also can come to Pinang Peranakan Mansion and we can give you uh, lessons. All right, uh, let's see the other rooms. Uh, so this is one other room and this is very unusual beta. It's a, it's a couple room. Uh, and yet there are two single beds. There was a time when uh, this was very fashionable. Maybe I think 1950s, 1960s. Yeah, because I still see it in my relative's home. And this beautiful room has, of course, our, uh, one of our most beautiful exquisite kabayas on display. And uh, let's move on. <clears throat> Look at the cupboards, huh? beautiful Ling Hong Du. So Ling Hong is a dragon phoenix cupboards exotic and uh, the cupboards in this room are all uh, from Cosimbi, Cosimbi's home, a uh, very important man in Phuket and so this is how they will stack up their clothes. Uh, this room we, we put all our epons. Now epons are Victorian glass vases. Uh, the next picture, yeah. And uh, it is said that uh, when Asian Civilization Museum came over, they said that we probably have the uh, biggest collection of epons in the whole of Malaysia and Singapore. So these are very special. This will be the topic for my third book. The text is ready. The manuscript is ready. We're just waiting to publish. They glow in the dark. If you put a backlight on and the whole room is dark, they will glow and they will flourish because of the addition of uranium oxide, which if you put a Geiger meter will register, will, will move, but not register a reading. So there is uranium. So stay away. Aha. Uh -huh. So we have one room that we've done up Chinese style and look at this beautiful Chinese bed, a namut lacquered in red and gilded in gold. And uh, 
the, the most beautiful things are the embroidery work. They are silk and done on gold couching or picking knots or satin stitches. I see whether I put in any uh, close-up of the embroidery. Uh, Dr. Leung, can you show us if there's uh, the embroidery? Yeah, just look at it. Exquisite and I love the colours. So these are typical Nonia colours. Uh, same goes with our porcelains and our saran kabayas. We, we love these colours. And I think there's one more picture. Can we see the other picture? Ah, look at that. How nice to go to bed with all this beautiful dingle dangle. Oh, by the way, these things are not just to pretty up. Huh? Everyone has a meaning because like uh, some are pomegranates. Pomegranates have lots of seeds. So wishing the couple lots of babies and other auspicious fruits. Huh? So the curtains are let down when a couple go to sleep because back in those days, uh, the ch children may even share the same big room with the parents. Okay, next. Ah, so here, this is, uh, this picture was taken, look at the things on the floor. This picture was taken when we were doing the inventorying of uh, uh, cultural practices for Georgetown World Heritage Incorporated. Georgetown World Heritage Incorporated is an agency in Georgetown that takes care of our Georgetown World Heritage site. Yeah, so uh, they do a lot of inventorying and uh, uh, archiving and documentation. So we were participating in one and we were showing them how we raise a wedding bed. So uh, there's going to be a wedding in the family and you have to raise the wedding bed. So there was uh, all the tapioca and all that that you need to put in because you want a lot of anak. So you plant the tapioca after that and uh, Tapioca grows underground very fast. They grow. So, uh, yeah, have lots of children. And uh, so that's our, um, all the maipo. <laughs> and of course, this is a wedding. Uh, okay, so if you want to get married in the Baba Nonya style, come to Pinang Puranakan Mansion and uh, look me up. And we can dress you like this. And I will be your ching cat. Hmm. The mistress of ceremony guiding you through the ceremonies. Oh, the ceremonies are so beautiful and meaningful. Sometimes we just think that there are uh, rites and customary and all that, but every step is beautiful. And seeing that the couple, this is the first time the couple ever met each other, you will see how they remove the layers of uh, distance between the couple. Okay, but that will be for another talk. Uh, Dr. Leung, next picture. Oh yeah, look. So this is a baju. Eh? They keep the baju inside here. Beautiful cupboard. And if you want, you can actually put your um, uh, dressing table on top of this. I mean, a dresser on top. The Chinese style one. Eh? Let's move on with another picture. Let's see if it has that picture. Okay, so this is the bed. Hey, look. Look at what's below on the cupboard. So there's a stool because the people are so tiny. Uh, that's why the bed is so tiny. Those days, they were very small size. Or they were married very young, like say uh, um, 16 years old. So yeah, this bed shifted them then. And uh, there's a pair of chicken. So that's for the wedding ceremony, where the chicken will then uh, release the chickens to run crazy in the bedroom. And if the first chicken that escape is a rooster, then aha, first baby will be a baby boy. If it's the hen, then it's a baby girl. So that's how you know the sex of your first born baby. Ah, so we still have a functioning kitchen. And those days, of course, they've got firewood. We still have the firewood. Uh, but then, of course, the cooking is now by guest. Uh -huh. uh, I don't want to build fire already. <laughs> And uh, the old porcelains and uh, cookery pots and uh, that's our nonya ware. It's termed nonya ware, but although it's just Chinese porcelain, but uh, the first writer, Ho Wing Ming, I think, he, he termed it nonya ware and the term stuck. So when a daughter is getting married, you might, the daddy might want to order in from uh, China, Ching De Chen Keng, this design, this particular design for nonyas. 
and uh, it will be a set of 144. Full dinner set for her, for her new home. So they're all beautiful. Uh, Vermeil rose and Vermeil verd green. And so, yeah, next picture. Ah, so we have this. This was our original from the house. A beautiful uh, stucco. And uh, it's got a pool, a big pool. But of course, that a little statue was not there originally. And I don't think it should be there either. Uh, now, uh, it doesn't go. Um, so this was an uh, open air last time. It was uh, outdoors. And we made it into a room. So I would imagine this is a beautiful indoor garden to read, to study, to paint, to uh, uh, compose poems. How beautiful, huh? And the two lanterns you see just now are the uh, wedding lanterns. Okay, so now here is a side little lane or alley, and you will see the jar uh, jardiniers, the 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 plant plant and pots and stands. Yeah, so this is typical of that era. And if you go straight on and turn the corner, you will get. It will bring us to Sanji uh, Chia Shu, the temple of Kapitan China Chen King Hui. Shall we go to the temple now? So look how ornate. And of course, they are laying out a feast for Kapitan. And sometimes we give him Nonya food. I'm not sure if he enjoys Nonya food because he was a China Ape Hakan guy. Uh, but our food is so delicious, so I'm sure he's pleased. Um, and uh, the... Uh, you see, uh, building a shrine or ancestral hall is very important for the Chinese or in China or going back and praying for the family. But Kapitan China have already made, he, he's a true Malaysian, huh? he already made Penang his home. He already did, made Malaya his home. So he built his ancestral temple hall in Penang knowing that his descendants will forever be here. Ancestral halls are uh, a reminder to anyone who is ever inside and present uh, to remember their predecessors and for the, and it is also built for the benefit of their descendants. This is like protection. So you see a uh, Kapitan China, uh, oh, by the way, these uh, wall hangings, they are from as long ago as two centuries, uh, like uh, because Kapitan China was uh, now 200th anniversary. And they, the red words will tell you the dating, like the year of the Emperor Guangxi, or whatever, then you can read it from there. No, oh, all right. So this one is uh, from where the you see the table with the food. You look out and you see this wonderful, beautiful, magnificent sight. Look at the roof. The the uh, mythological beasts are so wonderfully done. And I have a uh, China visitors who say that who have been doing a tour of the Chinese temples, clan houses in Penang, and they say this is the most beautiful of all, the most beautiful they've ever seen. So very ornate and a double door. Now double doors, you see there are two doors, huh? the doors for you to exit and then just before it, there's this door, right? Now double doors are meant for the, uh, for, for emperors, empresses, mandarins and magistrates to enter. Ordinary, normal mortals who have to walk around the sites. So uh, this, uh, of course, Kapitan China is a Mandarin, so he uses this door, and he was expecting probably the emperor to visit him, and the emperor can also come into that door. So this is another airwell. Let's move and see what uh, what's the next picture. Ah, yes, look at this. Um, <clears throat> these are on the right and left, both sides flanking of uh, the, the corridors, and these are all opera scenes. And they have stories of the romance of the Three Kingdom and uh, 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 nice Chinese classics and legends. And uh, one of them is uh, Mo Chong Ta Lo Fu, uh, the guy that was fighting with the tiger. Okay, let's move on. Uh, it's like <laughs> quite late, sorry. Dr. Lip, can we move on? Next I think this is the last, this is the last slide, I think. Last, okay. last photo. Back to him. Okay, hey, how come there was no picture of him in the temple? Okay, so he actually made a, a statue of himself. 
in the temple. If you can see the one with the food offering, Dr. Liu, the one with the food offering. Yeah? So he uh, made a statue of himself. So can you imagine he built this ancestral temple, which is supposed to be a shrine to himself. And he put himself there as the chief deity to be worshipped. So can you see behind all the jaws? That's where Kapitan China is standing. He's not a man of a, uh, that's very tall, but uh, prominent. And uh, he had this statue, oh, this China Apea. He has this statue. He commissioned a man called Benjamin Creswick to make this statue for him. And guess who Benjamin Creswick is? Now, Benjamin Creswick belonged to the people, uh, the sculptors of Birmingham. And the Birmingham sculptors are the people who put Admiral Nelson on Trafalgar Square. So, Tim Ken Kui was very um, mm, enlightened for his age. Huh? He knows where to find the best sculptors to make his statue. Same, as, uh, same makers as the uh, Admiral Nelson on Trafalgar Square. So, so, there he goes. So, he has installed himself there. So, everybody must come and bye bye to him. And um, since this is his shrine, he, he possibly thought that if he is the deity there, then he will copy his, uh, his descendants and grandchildren, yeah? So um, actually in this temple also, there are uh, longevity screens, 13 folds, and they were given to him by the prominent people of Penang in those days, like Chong Fatsi. So it is, uh, uh, one of our Penang historians, Clement Liang, he was, uh, he was telling me that it's amazing that actually he was being uh, uh, congratulated on his 70th, 75th birthday by all these other very, very important personalities in Penang. Okay? So he, he has really done uh, wonderful things for Taiping and Penang. And apparently, he was a man who was so vis had so much uh, was had foresight and vision that um, he not only planned his life so well, he even planned for his death. So he has this ancestral temple to commemorate himself and his achievements, and he actually also built a, a graveyard for himself, one of the biggest and grandest in all of Malaysia, Chinese style with four generals holding. Um, uh, flags or banners that, that proclaim uh, his awards. And uh, like Chinese, all the Chinese that have come here during uh, from long ago, he is uh, the evidence and he's exemplary of Chinese migration and success in Southeast Asia. He, he, he is a typical uh, hardworking Chinese that came here. And of course, he left behind uh, roads bearing his name in Penang, Akui Street, and Libo Ken Kui. Of course, uh, his names have got different spellings because either you pronounce it the Hokkien way, the Hakka way, the Cantonese way. So I think uh, well, while he may be seen as conceited ruthless, he was actually responsible and righteous because after um, the, the signing of the Pankow Treaty, he became firm and good friends with the Gihin leader, Jin uh, Chin Ayam, and he actually gave his son, Chung Taiping, uh, I mean, uh, he made Chin Ayam his uh, enemy, the Gihin enemy, the godfather of his son, Chung Taiping, of which uh, uh, he is bearing Taiping's uh, name, uh, Taiping. Okay, that's all. Wow, oh, that's a fantastic, yes, fantastic review, actually fantastic history. So much history, 200 years spending. <laughs> Thank you, William. Thank you so very much. Yeah. So I think uh, there are a lot of participants here, actually. So I think uh, beyond much ado, I think uh, we will ask the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, doctor, for, yeah. doctor, there's yeah. one question uh, from yeah. Facebook. I'll just read it. Huh? Uh, Okay, there's a question here from Johnny Sim Yoksu. Uh, he asked, who donated the mining land later beautified and now known as Piping Lake Garden? Haisan or Gihin or somebody else? Haisan and it's our man, Cheng Keng Kui. So let's have a party to celebrate him 
there, okay? <laughs> oh. uh, okay, there's a second question uh, from him also. Uh, okay. The Gotai Shi or five big clans of Penang, consisting of Kus, Chias, Yos, Limbs, and Tans, they align to Haisan or Gihin or just neutral? I'm not sure if uh, these uh, five are the same as the uh, Go Kwan in Taipei. I'm not sure. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure about that. But Shall I find out for you? Sure, no problem. Yeah. I think the, the history is so long, you know, so many personalities involved. I think uh, it's quite difficult to remember all the details, five, I'm sure. Uh, five yes. clans are, are very important in Benin. The, the five, these five clans are very important in Benin. Lillian, can you tell us exactly what you're doing now, actually, uh, in Benin? Okay. I, I'm not going to let COVID get me down. <laughs> so, um, I am happy to say that uh, I'm doing my, I, I'm, it's wonderful that now I have the time. You know, sometimes we keep putting off and say, oh, when I retire, I'm going to do this and that. And we never get to do it because we want to keep over here, keep over there. <laughs> so now with COVID, cannot go anywhere. And nobody bothers me on uh, uh, emails, wanting to know things and programs and all that. I am doing my Kassel Man Air, my Sulam Kabaya. I, I do my own Sulam Kabaya. And, um, uh, I am learning the piano, and I must say that uh, one of the most proud uh, things that I did to, uh, you know, I don't want to get me, uh, down because of COVID, locked in and have nothing to do and nothing to show for it, and there'll be two years gone. So I actually, uh, when the first uh, MCO started in March last year, I started collecting Nonya stories. But I wanted it to be Penang because our uh, Penang, uh, our State Chinese Penang Association, which was originally 1920, the British Straits Chinese. Okay, so Baba Nonyas are known as Straits Chinese. Huh? So the British Straits, uh, Straits of Malacca, <laughs> Straits Chinese um, uh, Association is 100 years old. So I wrote a book as a vice president of the association to commemorate uh, the occasion. And ta-da, here's a book. So I'm very happy that um, in spite of staying at home and COVID, I managed to publish a book. And I didn't want it to be just my story. I have seven other authors, so it's an anthology. Everyone writing what they recall of their families. So... Um, you, you're holding inverted, <laughs> Lily. <laughs> So it's called Once Upon a Kamching. And of course, I know that uh, this is called a Kamching. Kam, Kam, Kama, Ching, Ja. So it's a little Ja. But there is in Hokkien a play of the words Kamching, uh, Kanching, you know, Kamching, yeah, that, that are born of uh, uh, loyalty, love, duty to, to uh, between parent and child, um, between child and parent, between family members, and uh, between a husband and a wife, or a man and a woman, that kamting. So actually with a play of words then, it's once upon a kamting. So it's both kamting and kamting. Fantastic, yes. Oh, what about the other books you have? Are they still available? The other books that you have? Yeah, there are quite a number you have written. My goodness, yeah, so many. The covers are very nice, huh? So, yes. uh, of that's our culture, uh, very colorful. And uh, this, uh, this is my first book ever. Um, Straight Chinese Gold Jewelry. Here you have all the beautiful songs. Ah, this is, you know, Seven Terraces, Chris Ong. Oh, that's, his, that's his mom. He's our, she's our kawan. And the old uh, wedding pictures and the painting for the men. And uh, bracelets. Yeah. So, and then of course, uh, one of the most beautiful, I, I really thank, uh, I am very glad for my publishers. Oh no, sorry, no. My uh, design artist, 
uh, as with uh, this book. A lot of people like it because it's so pretty. And oh, by the way, uh, the interior is very nice too. Uh. See. That's my girl. And uh, uh, pictures like this. So, um, because Papa Nione, uh, pictures are always very colorful. So, the, here are the pages and the stories. Yeah. So, uh, I think YMC is going to take this book. Yeah, you can get it from YMC. Uh, but this is uh, one of the most pretty covers that we, uh, the designer did for us. It's a straight Chinese embroidery and beadwork. So here are the wedding robes, the old weddings and uh, the embroidery. So you can see the picking stitch and the couching stitches. And So this is embroidery and beadwork. And, and I, I find that, uh, you know, when you write a book, you learn so much because of the research. That, uh, you know, any dress, a wedding dress or whatever, it's just a wedding dress. But the Chinese wedding dress is full of meaning because every motif is a wish, is an auspicious motif. And, a, and whatever that motif represents is a wish clothing the bride or groom. So, so wonderful, huh? that I actually saw a dress, uh, a men's dress, and I was like, really, is it a man? It looked like ladies. Full of flowers, but why would a man wear flowers? So that was a 100 flower blessing for the men because uh, like orchids are for gentlemen scholars. So some flowers, particularly for men. Yeah, thanks, Lillian. Yeah, for introducing the books. Yeah, if any one of us interested in these books, how can we get them? Um, uh, they can contact you or they can contact me. Oh, okay. <laughs> they contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can leave us the uh, yeah, <laughs> how, how to. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, any, any questions from the floor? Are there any questions from the floor? Yeah, I wanted to ask something. I'm just curious. What were the languages did the Capitan speak? Because he also hang out a lot with the British and also did he also speak English? I think he, he did. Uh, first is I think he of course spoke Hakka, but he must be able to speak a little English, but he definitely can speak Malaya. So he spoke a little English because he was so buddy with the European Engineers Institute. It's not just like any engineer, no, it's this European engineers. So, and then he was uh, also uh, good friends with like, uh, uh, especially with uh, Sir Hugh Lowe. So I'm very sure that he could speak a smattering of English, uh, understandable. Thank you. And thanks for the talk. It was very uh, informative and interesting. Thank you. Any more questions? Excuse me. Yes. Do you have Thank any you book know. about the life history of Captain Cheng, uh, Cheng King Kui? Oh, yes. Uh, let me run and get. Oh, life history, I'm not exactly. Oh, uh, let me. Yes. I think there's some problem of his life I think, in Wikipedia oh, okay. as well. Yeah. But, uh, by a very important man, uh, author, He's, he was the one who oversaw the, uh, the restoration of. Uh, Hai Ki Chan to be Pinang Peranakan mentioned. His name is Tang Yao Wei. He is an uh, architect and he is uh, actually a conservation architect. And he wrote this book, but it's not his entire life. So actually, we are planning to write his life history because we want to celebrate his two, uh, two centuries old or 200 years old anniversary. So I am actually already contacting with uh, Taiping Heritage association or society uh, we are looking for funding then we are going to come up with a book on Capitan China and we will have uh, our Penang historians like Ku Salma, Clement Liang uh, and even Yao Wei because Yao Wei will write on architecture and uh, I think Taiping is helping me to find the, uh, your, their local historians so it will be like everybody puts in a paper on Capitan China 
So it's like, you know, people see different aspects of it. Excuse me, uh, how can I get a copy from you? Because the yeah. Hong Kong Chenlong people, they are looking for a life history book of this Kapitan uh, Chen Ting. We, we are also working with your Chenlong Association. Yes, yes, I'm from Taiping Chenlong Association. Uh, okay, so today I spoke My husband to... is the Chenlong people. Ah, I spoke to, I already spoke to Yap and I spoke to Sharon. And so they are actually uh, going to approach you all for some funding. <laughs> Yeah, like they, this morning Sharon and Yap also informed me that Sharon gave me the the, the entry code. Okay. Thanks so a lot for your sharing. We'll uh, publish the book by December then. Mm, okay. It's very Thanks, lovely. Huh? People say, what? You only started now. But yes, because it's because of YMCA La Hard Road that I started researching on Chung Heng Kui. And that's how I found out that he was 200 years old. So, so that's why it just happened. It just happened like five days ago. Yeah. At present, the Hong Kong and the China Shenlong people, they are looking for his life history. Mm. We, we try to fetch them, but I'm afraid that we don't have enough and, facts. And it's so remarkable. I think like uh, mm. it's, it's a bit sad that he was not acknowledged in our history books because he did so much uh, to him. Actually, even, you know, bouncing off him, the, the port well and the steamships and and the roads and telegraph and all that. And, okay, and thank you very much. Now boom because of him. Lillian, <laughs> may I ask whether are there relatives still around in in in, in Malaysia? The, I think we are. Um, yeah, uh, relatives of the Tung family. Okay, his son, I think the fourth great uh great great great, great la, fourth great sir, uh grandson was Owen Chu, who happens to be the bodyguard or uh, right-hand man of Tunku Abdul Rahman. So he was always, he has a mustacho and he drives a red sports car around and uh, he will once in a while or on feast days come to the temple. Um, he just passed away like three years ago. Yeah, and uh, so I think his wife is still there and they're living at uh, Jalan Chung Lai Hin, Chung Lai Hock. Um, I know there's a, a very, <clears throat> uh, a very fortunate grandson who inherited the fortune and he is living in Australia and today I'm trying to contact him yeah uh, to tell him that we are celebrating his grand great, 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 great grandpa's birthday oh, that's great yeah, yeah I think they will get a good history from him Miss yeah. Chong Lai Ying she's in Penang she's in Taiping Miss Chong Lai Ying the sixth generation of the Capitan family oh, they're living in that road Chong Lai Ying Yes, she's in typing. Oh, I want to contact uh, the, the guy in Australia to tell him we're celebrating his Akong's birthday. Uh, I have a question. Yes, Mike, yes. Yes, hi, Mike from Penang. Okay, so I, I'm very interested in the Gihin Hai San, right? Is there anywhere we can read more about it? And also there's a temple, I think in... Um, uh, Hmm. Armenian Street, right? There, there's, there's, uh, yeah, there's another one. How, 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 what, what's and the link? The Ku Kong Si, that one. Ah, uh, be, beside the Ku Kong Si. Uh, the Tan, Tan. Uh, it's got secret passages. And, yeah. Uh, uh, I can link you up with uh, Clement Liang. He, uh, I'm also from the Penang Heritage Trust. We are council members together. I think he's our vice president. Um, and secondly, uh, the other uh, place that you can get uh, stories about this. Uh, clans and Kongsis, uh, I love the Kongsis though. If, if today there's some, I will join. No? Kongsi <laughs> uh, <laughs> Then I'll be a mama mafia. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Uh, Pideng Institute, um, the director, of the, he wrote on the Kentik Tong, on the clans. Uh, yeah, I forgot. I, uh, his name slipped my mind now. So Penang Institute uh, at uh, Pilaticus, yeah, so off Cantonment Road, they have uh, stories on it. And the director wrote a book on Kentik Tong. Oh, wow. To, uh, either he's in or he's in or Haisan. Uh, I think Haisan. Ah, uh, okay, great. Thank and you. And Gihin celebrates every year, you know, they have a street party every year, the Gihins. And you can go into the temple and actually see the things that they, 
they use for initiation rites. Huh? Serious? Uh? Oh. Yeah, poke your finger, drink the blood, become blood brothers. Ah, really? Where, 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 where does this take place? Um, uh, rope walk. Um, they take place, uh, I forgot when already, because now COVID, two years already, they didn't have it. But those days, is a big street. The whole street of rope walk uh, is closed. And people dress up like uh, in some food and, and they will play the old games and uh, all the old food will be uh, on the street, you know, it's very nice. Wow. Okay. Cool. I must look that up. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Right. Thanks, Mike. Any, any more questions? I wonder if the government uh, helps. Yes. Uh, Hi, the of, government. Uh, so many people asking this questions. This yeah. lady used to be from the Singapore National uh, what National Arts Council. <laughs> no, I'm from the NUS Baba House. Ah. It's more relevant to your talk. From the National University of Singapore's mm -hmm. Baba House. I was I'm a retired director. And Lillian, I wrote the foreword to your first book, the jewelry book. Maybe I've forgotten, Christine Paul. <laughs> I wrote the foreword to your first book. It was okay. so long ago, I guess. But uh, my question is, and I'm still a, a Malaysian citizen, you know, although I'm staying in Singapore, you know, I'm a permanent resident here. Does the government help you? Does no. the government help at all in any way? No? no? Hmm. Not at all? Yeah. So now with the, the one and a half years lockdown is a, not a good situation. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm sympathetic. Yeah, I can understand. Well, the congratulations then on keeping the spirit alive. And your talk was very, very interesting. I must the do juicy you details. Next time. <laughs> thank yeah. you, Christine. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yes, I think we can have one more question before I produce the, uh, introduce you to the uh, uh, YMCA, the Hard Road, and also 15 Clark Street. Uh, one more question, one last question, please. Yeah. One uh, burning question. Yes. Yeah, I actually just wanted to find out when exactly is uh, actually is this uh, Chongqing Kiwi's uh, birthday? Uh, is it known? Because uh, a search on Google only says that it was born around 1821. Well, that's all. I didn't see is, uh, the date and the month, but I didn't write it down. I just put down the, the year. So, um, I think I can find it. I'll check, maybe it's in this book. If the two questions I must answer, the uh, five, oh, the five clans and your question. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll post a, the answer to uh, YMCA Lahad Road, then you can retrieve the answers from there. Okay, you can post it to the Facebook group, I suppose, yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Lillian. Thank you very much for a very well, great talk actually. Lots of history there, lots of photos. Very impressive indeed. Thank you so very much. And Lillian accepted our offer to take on this presentation last minute within one and a half weeks. <laughs> That's tremendous. Let's give a oh, loud applause. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, big applause. Big, big applause. applause. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Virtual. I'll just share with us uh, a, a little bit of our uh, YMCA. Okay, uh, this talk is sponsored by Lahad Road YMCA. Lahad Road YMCA or the YMCA in general is about strengthening communities. YMCA recognizes the strength is in community. It is community centered, brings people together, nurtures potential of the people and the local presence and has a global reach as well. Three areas of focus, youth development, healthy living, social responsibility, and Christian ministry. In youth development, there is the nurturing, the potential of every child, teen, and young adult. Healthy living, improving the nation's health and well-being. Social responsibility, 
giving back and providing support to our neighbors. And we need partners to do the job. And we also need volunteers to handle the work. So now I will just present a little bit of uh, 15 Clark Street. Now this is 15 Clark Street. Uh, we have the logo. This is the old rendition in the uh, watercolor of the place. And this is the current place. Now 15 Clark Street, actually is the, the current name is actually Dalan Sultan Abdul Jalil. Uh, this row of uh, shop houses was built by the late Long Sinam, my grandfather in 1929 for the family members to reside. And in 2017, I managed to purchase this uh, building uh, because actually I was born in one of the shop houses on this street, or this row of shop houses. Uh, the, the, uh, but I couldn't get hold of this, the one which I was born in, but I managed to get hold of this building 15, uh, 15 Clark Street. So today is a legacy center. It's known as legacy today because legacy is about the past. We want it about today, the present. So it's about teaching, networking, and blessing the community. And the areas of focus are similar to that of YMCA in youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. So inside the, uh, the building, there is a gallery which highlights people and events between 1880 and 1940. That is the time, uh, the lifetime of uh, Mr. Leong Sinam, 1880 to 1940. So during this period, we have the Federated Malay States, the British Empire, Imperial China, the Chinese Revolution, the first and the second Chinese Revolution, the Nangyans, like us, and the Republic of China. And this is the CSR project of my clinic. Now, this is the exhibition hall, a Leong Sinam exhibition hall on the first floor. So what we have is that the original uh, photos during his time and some of the uh, history, the, the timeline of what he did in Malaya. And this is the exhibition hall. There's some buses and some you know, uh, so modern things, I suppose, yeah. And some old furniture. And this shop actually was belonged to this uh, great, uh, my grandmother, in effect, uh, yeah. Because yeah, uh, Long Sinam has five wives, one of the uh, wives of uh, Long Sinam. And now on the ground floor, we have the Federated Malay States Lobby. You can see the Federated FMS uh, flag, the royalty, and the British flag, all right? And of course, Long Sinam. And here, the story of the uh, Chinese Revolution, the flags used during the Chinese Revolution. So what are we doing with that place? Youth development is about nurturing the potential of every child, teen, and young adults. So we have English calligraphy classes. We had, uh, before the pandemic, uh, now of course we can't do anything. We had opera there, marriage of Figaro opera in that place. We had piano recital by Lin Yu. We have Christian fellowship, school Christian fellowships. We have art, youth art exhibitions done by young people. We have Christmas stories, musicals, jazz, and also the exhibition by the Urban Sketches. And they have sales of their products. Huh? You see a lots and lots, I think there are lots of lots of pictures and they actually sold a lot of pictures as well. Uh, people are very interested in their paintings, huh? watercolor paintings. And what, what will you do about healthy living, improving the nation's health and well-being? What, what are we doing actually? YMCA together in the 15 Clark Street. We have expo meetings there and we are, and Character Society is actually accredited to give lectures. Lah. We can give lectures to doctors as well, and they can earn CME points. Eh? Yeah, so we are teaching students eh? huh? as well. Uh, hobby talks, cooking demonstration. Uh, Dr. Amar giving his talk on birds. Dr. Chan 
on birds as well. And then World Tuberculosis Day, TB awareness. We teach nurses, doctors as well. Yep. And we also have a uh, Paracta Society Assist Support Group. These are patients with uh, breathing difficulty, people with breathing difficulty, they learn something and they have gala time playing caroms and having good food. Doctors TME night, we also give lectures to doctors. Uh, yeah. We also have, uh, have had uh, courses for physiotherapists where they attend, uh, they attend how to do chest physio and all. We have also screening tests for uh, people with obstructive sleep apnea, those people who are not allowed, have excessive daytime sleepiness. And also healthy health involved, we also have uh, ceremonies, spiritual health, we also included, we have also included spiritual health as well, besides physical and mental health. Social responsibly, what are we doing there? Art lessons for charity is very uh, nice of the uh, people, the, the uh, exco of the uh, urban sketches to donate quite a hefty sum for charity. So we raise the money through them and give it to some poor people, uh, some homes, okay? And Christmas parties for the underprivileged. All these children from three homes, uh, and, uh, three homes, children from three homes during Christmas time. We provide food. And heritage shops, Mr. Anderson, talking about how to preserve old shop houses, shop buildings, etc. And uh, so it, is, uh, it commands a large uh, audience as well. It's, it's built up to the first floor. And of course, uh, Mr. Howell sending up the images from this top upstairs. Ipoh World Exhibition, all the old pictures of Ipoh and some of Perak. And uh, Mr. Ian Anderson uh, signing off his books. And of course, Exhibition of the Life and Times of Leung Sinan, up on the first floor. Kinta Nature Exhibition, Christmas celebrations, and we are also able to raise money for the Ora Asli uh, people uh, through their singing and whatnot. Huh? So these three areas, so please come and join us. So I'm presenting this not to boast of what we have done, but to encourage you all to come forward, all of us to come forward to contribute. So. Initially, when I started to have this place, there was this uh, team legacy today, which I wanted to have a cafe, you know, where the people have some food, they can sell products, uh, charity products, you know, print t-shirts, you know, crafts from the all Asli camps, and all that, you know, they can sell, and then people can uh, talk, they can have a hub, innovation hub, social hub, and then they got internet facilities, uh, we have unified there, and somebody selling, you know, uh, finger food. So they can enjoy the food, chit chat, network, learn something, and also help out with the sales of some crafts from the uh, marginalized people uh, or whoever, or from the uh, diasporic people. So thank you very much for coming in. So remember, stay safe, get vaccinated, wear masks, practice social distancing, and sanitize your hands. And one more request. Now, please uh, go and fill in this feedback form because we wish to know what you would like to have next month. So in the form, you'll be asked the choice of in-person events when we are able to open up after the, uh, maybe sometime later after the COVID pandemic, choices of virtual programs that you wish to have, or maybe you wish to volunteer to give a talk, give a lecture, sing to us, play a musical instrument, organize some events for us, teach some marginalized children, poor children, uh, tell some stories, uh, or you wish to sell something. You have created some craft, you wish to sell, you know, you want to sell food, drinks, t-shirts, prints, books, etc. And of course, the last question would be, would you like to join YMCA? <laughs> All right, so this is, uh, you can contact me directly, my office number, and my 
WhatsApp message only number. So if you WhatsApp here, you won't get a phone call, but I will call you with another number. All right. This is for messages only. So please take note of this. If you got any of these to contribute, or wish to share, or wish us to help you out in any of these, let us know. All right. So you can also find us in the uh, Lahad Road YMCA page, Facebook group, page, and page. All right. Okay, that's that's about it. So thank you very much. So any questions you wish to ask uh, before we close? Uh, thank you, Dr. Leong and Lillian. It is a very good program. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Daniel here. Yes, Dr. Daniel is the uh, president of YMCA IFO, the, the brother of YMCA, yes. Nice to have you here, Daniel. Do you enjoy the talk? Very much so, and uh, Dr. Leong, a remarkable program. Uh, presentation by Lillian is so good. Also, she's so pretty. Oh, yes. <laughs> Old man like me saying, never mind. Because, because you. You you don't go anywhere already, must dress up at home. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dr. Yes. You. Yeah, and any more questions? Any, yeah. Lillian, anything you want to add on? Out for our uh, celebration when we bring it to Taipei. So we are just working on it because like I said, I found this out only five days ago. So uh, we will tie in with YMCA still for these things. We'll let you thank know. You. Yeah, thank you. We will do, yes. Any more questions? If not, thank you very much. And we must also thank Jason Chin, uh, working behind the scene. Actually, you know, he has been uh, doing all the work of creating videos for us, creating the oh. posters for us. So thank you very much for coming in again. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you all the, God bless. Have a great day, a great weekend ahead. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Bye.